Hey, hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Miyogi. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome a bit to my brainchild here. Um, we'll be playing Backstreet Billiards. I just want to relive this. This is one of my favorite games when I was a child. And it was a little bit of, you know, family bonding in a way between me and my father. <laughs> uh, for a billiard game back in the PS1, this is actually really good. And now, I'm not gonna uh, delay things any further. <laughs> to be honest, I'm just, you know, letting the sexy saxophone just play in the background. But come on, let's just get it over with. I was supposed to make a really dirty joke at the very beginning. <laughs> I was about to say, let's go play with some balls and some shafts. <laughs> what is wrong with me? One of the really big reasons why I wanted to play this game is the story. And you know me. If it's racing, if it's whatever, I am a story-driven person. Now, I'm gonna make this a bit of a let's dub. I'm gonna collab with some friends. And let's just let the narration go past. I'm usually very bored when it comes to that. I wanna interact with the people there. Um, just read it in your own leisure. Oh my god, he is so hot. I mean... <laughs> okay, yeah, he came to this town to look for answers of where his father's keepsake would be. It's a legendary cue stick. And uh, we pretty much uh, this new guy on the block, unknown skills, unknown territory. And we're gonna be hitting it off at Sparky's. When it comes to the inorganic, for a PS1 game, this is quite decent. I mean, a little more shadows here and there, and it can actually pass off as like uh, GTA 5 Proto back in the 90s. Alright, so let's get on with the story. Sparky's. This little place was the first in town that caught my attention. Its neat interior is occupied by a single empty billiards table. Aside from the customers by the counter, there are no other people inside. Well, I guess I should talk with them. Alright, I'm not gonna say anything when it comes to the other characters. Uh, like I said, it's a let's dub. I'm going to ask some friends to talk it up. To talk it off with me. The group standing there the group standing around the counter are all dressed in leather jackets. I made eye contact with one of the people by the counter. He's standing up and walking over towards me. Hey you! You must be new around here. Okay, so I guess we get introduced to this one guy. Um, let's just look around more. Uh, there's nothing more to look at X other than him. It seems as though as he is the leader of the group. He looks like a troublemaker. Yeah, with that, with that hair. Hey, come on. Relax. My name is Ronaldo. This is my favorite hangout. Nice to meet you. Since you have a cube with you, you must be a player too. Yeah, huh? I guess. It's called Zipang. Have you heard Let's of it? Let's play instead of standing around talking. You shouldn't say no to me. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I, I don't want to piss him off when he says you shouldn't say no to me. That's good. Alright, so I'm just gonna say yes. So, what do you want to play? Hmm. Alright. Guys, I know this is unusual for you to catch me playing something that is not a racing game. Alright. So, and I'm, I did play billiards before, so I'm gonna walk you through a bit. So yeah, I'm gonna be teaching you a little one to see. There's a bit of, you know, <laughs> I don't want to speak for Okay, banking uh, is where in the billiards game, they decide who gets to hit first. The key to banking is whoever hits it at the very, at uh, the opposite half, the one below us, or the closest to it, gets to hit first. And by the way, if you hit it and you go past the your opponent's uh, ball, this is going to get so sexual, I can feel it right here. Um, okay, the key in nine ball is you have to hit all of the balls in consecutive order, and whoever pockets the nine ball is the winner. I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> oh my god, first first gameplay, and now it's already a scratch. There's a little trick about billiards. It's a bit of a mind game here. You need to plan out where the white ball. Um, lands after hitting the the respective ball that you're after. Oh, and if I actually hit a scratch, it pretty much um, lets the opponent have the liberty of what they call ball in hand. Ball in hand is where you get to move the cue ball. Yeah, that's the what that's what the white ball is called. To move the cue ball wherever you want. 
Oh, come on! That was perfectly... Yeah, and pretty much like some more sports, if you don't follow the rules, you get a foul. Alright, for this one, foul, I was really aiming for three, it didn't hit. So yeah, you can see uh, Vinaldo there just moved the, pop, the cue ball right on a more convenient spot to put the three ball in. The losers only confirm if, in this case, Ronaldo shoots the four, the nine ball in before I do. For those who love math and for those who hate math, and I know most people here, they don't do this because math, because of the angles, trajectories, and all that, you would need it because <laughs> you can't just aim directly at the ball like what you see me doing right there. You got... Oh, god damn it, Jimmy, okay. <laughs> That's two scratches in one episode. <laughs> Scratch, by the way, by terminologies, is the term where the cue ball goes into the pocket. It's pretty much free game for your opponent. And Ronaldo was an idiot. Okay, let me see if what I'm about to do actually works. I'm just gonna pin it to the side. There we go. Okay, now, um, oh yeah, if your your corresponding ball goes in first, you pretty much got um, hold of the game. No, don't go scratch. Don't go scratch. <sighs> There's actually a trick before. If you while hitting the corresponding balls, if you manage to pocket the nine ball in, boom! Oh my god! <laughs> Okay, out of bounds, bad idea. Yeah, if the cue ball goes out of bounds, it's like basketball, free game. Oh no. Ronaldo, please don't pocket this. I beg of you, please, no. No, no! You idiot! Ah. Hey you, is your cue fake? Oh look at that smug face in this I basketball. don't know why you are here, but you cannot say you weren't ready. Now we have to find it him again. Helped. Play what so. What do you want to play? Alright, let's begin. I am a little hard-headed bastard. Yeah, we're gonna stick with nine ball because it's practically the quickest way throughout this game. Maybe we'll try it at one to two characters per episode. So given this is the pilot episode, it's intentionally going to be long, but with some cards of course. Okay, free game for me for number three. There's a reason why I'm putting it down, I'll tell you guys in a bit. See? And I'll move it up a bit. I'll explain. Should I explain? Yeah, if I was a little hard on that one, that could have went in. Oh, nice! I, I actually wasn't expecting that. this goes oh oh this oh trick shot <laughs> that was legit because i hit the eight ball first <laughs> yes trick shot i'm gonna go with more on power and technique balance you you're pretty good huh i shouldn't have taken you so light yeah you just did the first the first round was actually just a fluke i was just testing you but a game is a game you won if you can play me again sometime by the way, why are you here? Yeah, I should say it. What? You're looking for your father's keepsake? The legendary hustler's cue, huh? Never heard of it. Well, anyway, I can tell you we can get a good game of pool around here. First off, there is a fast food restaurant, Little Cherry, a hustler's hangout. You should talk to a man called Brian and ask him about the cue. The second place is Coach Abamba, a miscellaneous goods store. The store does not carry billiard items, but there is someone there who may be able to help you out. I'll keep my eyes open, so come back and check in with me again. Don't forget about playing another game with me. I'll kick your butt next time. Heh, <laughs> as if. I hope you can find your father's keepsake. Okay, well, I uh, guess he's kind of a good guy. Let's see if there's anything new here. Oh, let's see the tables. His companions moved away from the counter to watch the game. Looking back now, I think they were watching out of honest interest. Okay, that's good. They created with a very nice picture. Mao seems to be the name of the person who painted it. It's titled 
Hodelic Circus. Huh. The names of paintings that you actually get. Yeah, it's a oh okay, it's a pawn stability table. Okay, I was wondering earlier what uh, pistols was, so it was the billiard table. Okay, now let's go to Little Cherry. Okay, for this episode, I'm going to do two. Two guys. I hope we nail Brian good. Okay, so I'm getting some Elvis vibes here from this. Um, it's like a drive through dine-in from the 90s in the US. Okay, here is that fast food restaurant Little Cherry Ronaldo spoke about. This whole store really captures the 50s feel. Their business seems to be doing well. I have to look for Brian. I think I should ask the waitress at the counter. Can I help you? What would you like to order? I am so tempted to ask about the hot dog, but nah. The person with the white jacket is Brian. But to be honest, the waitress is kind of cute. I really wonder, did I go back to play this game for the sake of the story, or did I just go back here for the sake of the waitress? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Brian. What can I do for oh you? Oh my god, this guy looks like he's going to hit on me. Were you referred to me by Ronaldo? Well, then I cannot tell you anything. Okay, what the hell is up with that? Am I, am I fooled? But that's too rude. Let's see. If you beat me at a game of pool, you may ask me anyway. How about an ball? Yeah, okay, sure. Now, let's begin. I think nine balls what these people like to play. Ah, oh, they really got the Elvis feel on this one. Okay, good. Well, this is a this is a good trap for Brian. <laughs> but let's see you try to not foul yourself out of this one. Aha! Okay, this is where things get silly. I'm really just waiting for guys like him to make a foul because when you know that I am in a hurry, I use the other ball as a lineup shot. Oh, I got the double whammy. <laughs> oh! No, I never wanted that. Okay. I got cocky there. Okay, I'll admit now, Brian is actually kinda good. Yeah, he is kinda good. He's going for it. Oh my god, this guy! No, 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 no. Are you kidding me? Seriously, he's just ruining me right now. No, no, oh! Oh, oh! Go up here. Oh! I did not mean to do that. Should have gone backwards. Oh great! Now he's going to just drain me like Ronaldo did, and I can't excuse my way out of this one for some reason. I have this gut feel. Oh, come on, that was perfectly in! Okay, what? You have a much clear... You have a much clearer shot from there. Oh. Please no. Please no. Please no. Please no. Please no. Please no. Screw up. Screw up. Screw up. No, 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 no. Line it up. Line it up. Oh my god, this is gonna be a little tough. Let's do a little two and two. Yes! One shot him! Nice. Well, technically not one shot, but one set him. Now talk! Talk, you sexy bastard, you. I'm sorry, I lost. I can't believe it. Shucks. Well, yeah, technically it's the 90s. They don't swear as much as we do here in the 2017. Whoops. Excuse me. Uh, by the way, what do you want to ask me? I promised you, didn't I? You were looking for a cue. Is it THE legendary Q? I've heard that Q is somewhere in this town, but I don't know who possesses it. Yeah, I do know someone who may be able to help, though. Her name is May, and she works at Cochabamba. 
Why don't you check with her? Mm, check with her, huh? She likes shooting pool. So I bet she'd ask you to play a game. Okay. I would take you up on that offer, Brian. Thank you. Alright, I'm gonna cut it here for the time being. Don't worry, the other racing last place are still continuing. I just want to get this off my back because nostalgia's sake. And yeah, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next part.